Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MSP Initiative Live. Here we are, uh, post Build IT or Build It, uh, the conference that we had uh, in New Jersey over the last several days. Um, you know, I, I'll admit it was nice to be at a conference. I, I know that's weird, but. Um, you know, and I know the smaller regional events that have been happening for some time, but they're just not the same, right? Uh, and I know it wasn't a huge conference like we're all used to, right? Like a DattoCon or an IT Nation or something like that. But um, it felt closer to that than anything else I've been in, you know, around uh, since 2019. So for whatever that's worth, um, you know, you know, just being able to grab the community together, you know, and really just talk shop. Um, to be honest, and kind of missed that. So, you know, nothing wrong with the virtual, as we know, but, um, you know, just trying to put things back into the box and, and see how we feel, right? So this is going to be one of those open sessions, right? So I'm going to allow Darren and James, if you guys want to jump in, feel free to unmute. But, um, you know, kind of radio showing it today. But um, no, it's great. I, I really did like it. I mean, you know, listen, was it perfect? No. I mean, you know, we probably had a little bit less people show up than they expected, um, but it was still, you know, I'd say 250 plus, which was nice. Um, they really did a great job over on the IT by design side. Um, Statue of Liberty, um, you know, where they kind of rented the island <laughs> for the night um, was actually pretty cool, right? I mean, it's just amazing how many people from the area just never went to the Statue of Liberty, right? Like people who live in New York and New Jersey, right? Like like people ask me all the time, they're like, <clears throat> hey, you've seen the Liberty Bell, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but there's some people from Philly who have never gone and seen Independence on the Liberty Bell. So bottom line is it was great. It was a nice, nice touch with Liberty Island. Um, and then we had Gary V. That was my that was my win for the uh, for the whole event. I really that's honestly why I was so excited to go. Um, <clears throat> the Gary V session was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I do I actually have it posted up online. I kind of recorded the whole session, you know, kind of went numb arm, but totally worth it. Uh, dude is as cool in person, if not cooler than, than online, right? Where, you know, you can't really super, super get a hold of him sometimes for the people that try. And according to Matt Solomon, he texts him all the time, but he may not get a reply, which is, obviously makes sense. Um, Walter, I'm going to unmute you as well. If you go want to join in, <laughs> just unmute yourself. So, Big picture, kind of recap from the from the event. Um, people are still, you know, the IT industry is alive and well. Um, still a lot of people out there from different flavors, right? Um, pure play, advantage services, could be audio, video, visual, could be phones, uh, could just be break fix, trying to get into managed services still. I mean, there's still a pretty crazy, like, um, spread of people, right? That kind of all fit under this, you know, channel umbrella we say we live under. So, uh, lots of that, <clears throat> lots of education. Uh, security is definitely still top of mind. Um, but the Gary V session was great. I mean, a couple of snips, you know, that kind of, you know, stuck in my head, right? It's like, hey, you know, um, he said, your business owns you. You don't own your business, right? For a lot of the people in the room, which was just so true. Um, you know, because, you know, we're all like literally answering calls at all hours of the day to the night. Um, Op open mic day, Edward. So if you want to jump in, just unmute yourself. Um, Going to allow you to allow you to talk. So um, if you want. So. Oh, how about that? I'll promote you to a panelist if you want to talk. So anyway. Um, you know, so your business is your business owns you instead of you owning your business. I thought that was a really like legitimate line. Um, he did say that he, he has friends in the IT services business and, um, the number one suggestion he gave everyone was if you're not doing LinkedIn ads and not ads where you're in messaging people, I'm talking about in the feed ads, uh, four or five different variations of different content that actually show up in the feed. He's like, you're, you're, you're doing it wrong. Uh, you're missing out. And he's like, three years ago, I was yelling about this and it was even more potent then. He's like, it's still, it's expensive, but it works. <clears throat> so if you're not doing targeted LinkedIn ads in the feed, apparently we're doing it wrong. So 
So that was one piece of advice that was pretty clear. Um, the other thing that, you know, Gary Vee really came out and said was, um, you know, like some people in the room, he said, shouldn't be business owners, right? And other people in the room um, are kind of stuck in their ways. And he's like, you know, like content creation is king. We all know that. But when the question came up, should you be advertising your company's name versus you, the person who's running the company, really? He said it should be, if you're under 25 million in revenue, the story should be about you. I mean, like you can still put your company's name in there, but if you're just trying to put your company's branding out and you're not yourself, the individual, the brand, he's like, you're, you're, you're doing it wrong. He's like, people do business with people. And he's like, things are getting automated, right? The people part is the part that really, you know, makes it or breaks it in the end. So that was super interesting. And um, the one last piece that came out that's like top of mind from that session. Again, this is online. Uh, I actually dropped the link uh, in the um, in the chat if you guys are interested. But it, it is on. Uh, I actually recorded it through Facebook Live, so you should be able to watch it everywhere. Um, the whole session is about an hour. Um, totally, totally, totally recommend watching it because uh, honestly, you'll you'll learn a lot. Um, the last thing that I, uh, I kind of was trying to get out of him was. You know, how do you deal with people who aren't, you know, kind of motivated, right? Like they don't have the hustle. Um, and he's like, listen, you either have to figure out what makes them turn or you have to get rid of them. You know, like he's like, don't keep those people around. If, if like you can't get, you know, get people who are all all on board and you can't figure out how to you know connect with them, then they're just not the right people in the right chairs. And the longer you, you know, kind of leave that person in that position, um, it hurts you, it hurts them, it hurts everybody. So he's like, make, make decisions, right? Don't, don't sit and wait. So um, lots of good feedback, uh, you know, lots of good things to learn. Again, put that link in the chat. Um, should be able to watch it without even logging into Facebook from my understanding, but uh, there you go. So um, other things that came out of the conference that are quasi-interesting. Um, there's the rumor mill. It always happens in the hallways. So apparently there's uh, multiple acquisitions, something like three or four, um, that'll be announced between now and the end of the year, probably at the conferences that are coming up if they happen. And um, don't know what they are, but the bigs mostly are involved. I know Darren's cringing probably behind the screen, but um, probably going to be hearing news um, <clears throat> I'm always cringing, George. I'm, I'm always cringing about something, but uh... <laughs> I, I know I, yeah, you know, like you know, the big, the big K, right? He just can't. He just doesn't want to be the the next one that gets that gets swallowed up on there. But um, yeah. <clears throat> four, uh, three or four are, are apparently gonna potentially come out for the end of the year, be announced. Uh, one that did get announced <clears throat> at uh, the Build It conference was Password Boss uh, has acquired. Um, uh, what was it? It's like the, hold on one second. I don't want to put the wrong name out there. So one second, auto elevate. So auto elevates kind of in that threat locker ish type category, right? Where they, it's like privilege management, right? And people can't install stuff unless you approve it. And then to kind of give you a cool interface to like allow deny, you know, as people are trying to install stuff in real time, stuff like that. So, um, so Password Boss, who uh, is primarily owned by David Bellini, and if that name doesn't ring a bell, uh, he's one of the Bellini brothers who started, founded, and sold ConnectWise, uh, owns Password Boss, and which is like a password, it's like a last pass, you know, category type thing. And they acquire Auto Elevate, which is in that threat locker kind of category, and you know, now Spash shows together. So <clears throat> that was announced formally. It's out there. I'm not giving you breaking news uh, other than it was put out yesterday. And if you didn't hear it, well, then you heard it here. What do you, what do you think, Darren? Uh, I, know you're, I, I know you're in Threat Locker land well, already. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm very happy with Threat Locker. I, they've done a. I've been very impressed with that product, and it, it's definitely making me sleep a little bit better at night. I mean, you know, people say, oh, you know, every tool you can't rely on any. Of course, no tool is going to be an end all, be all, and obviously, we all have to have lots of them, but. I just, I like the approach of it. And I, I mean, I just think in general, more people that have some type of solution, whether it's them or whether it's 
a competitor. I mean, although again, I'm happy, very happy with them, but um, it just helps the whole, you know, it helps the overall security posture of the industry. And, you know, the more people that do this kind of stuff, the better we all are. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, like even, even just not making everyone a local admin, <laughs> Yeah. was probably a good start right yeah we have listen we have plenty of clients where for a variety of reasons that there are there are too many probably too many local admins so in particular doing this kind of thing is is a nice uh whether you call it a band-aid to that or or something else it's still it's still nice uh, but you know going to the the topic of of uh vendor mergers and acquisitions and all that. And we just dropped the vendor. The first vendor we've dropped in a long, I don't even know when. Um, and it, not because the product wasn't necessarily any good anymore, but we just had no communication and our renewal came and it charged my card and nobody talked to us. And I mean, the team, the people that we had previously dealt with are all gone. And, you know, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'll, I'll say the vendor, not that I'm um, particularly mad at them for any reason, but I said, you know, we're, you know, it would happen to be Aubic and um, mm -hmm. we just, we, it's something we kind of always used a little bit, but not very much. And when we looked into some options and coupled with no communication and kind of, anyway, you know, it's like they get whatever happens to them and people leave and things change. And then it becomes uh, you know, it becomes a situation you have to evaluate. So. No, I, I, I listen, I mean, Everybody has to evaluate for multiple reasons, right? I mean, the bottom line is if you're not actively using a tool, you know, the question becomes, you know, are you not actively using it because you didn't implement it within your organization and it just went onto the shelf and collected dust? Or is it still providing value for you, right? So these are I the questions say, that come look, up. I, I would say with that, whatever, whatever the tool might be, if you have an annual renewal coming up, it is prudent and for not a small amount of money and you know have a account manager reach out and just touch base which had happened in the prior years you know and in this case it was just came and went and it's like okay well i mean you just doesn't make you feel at all valued and even though again we weren't a huge customer per se but it was a lot of money for us i mean when you when that you know when that goes away for whatever reason it's uh, it's not a good thing, right? No, I, I get that. I mean, and and listen, <clears throat> there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of change, right? <clears throat> I think Avic effectively sold their company, um, more or less. Um, I know that they they probably made a pivot to enterprise, uh, which obviously you know is not the MSP space. It's a different mindset, different sales cycle, different different idea. Um, but there, it, it is becoming a little bit harder for vendors to be um, channel only, right? Or channel, very, very channel focused. <clears throat> because when you start bringing outside investors in, they tend to start saying, hey, when are we going to enterprise? Because they feel that's a bigger opportunity, right? Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something to talk about. And the, <clears throat> the other thing is there's, definitely a lot of turnover right uh in personnel you know year to year uh, especially with covid right and you know a lot of people you know cut their staff down just because you know they were worried that things were going to kind of slow down and it seems like that's turned around right everybody's on kind of at least in vendor land seems to be on a hiring craze <clears throat> there's a lot of you know people just switching companies right i mean, I mean look, i'm going to turnover is something that we you know with every vendor we, we see constantly for a variety of reasons i just I'm a believer that if it, when there is turnover, at least the, the if you deal with somebody, that person should reach out to you and say, "Hey, here's the new person or the new person." And it happens maybe more, less than half of the time. I can't tell you. We've had other other vendors that I mean, Axiant would be a good example of one where we've been, you know, vendor uh, person after person after person, and we're always hunting down who our new person is and yeah um, we only use them for their anchor sync product which actually works pretty well um but sometimes we have a need and when you don't know who to even contact for that need because there's been turnover it is just unnecessary frustration so yeah totally get it um that i mean maybe maybe uh some some hygiene is probably the best way to say it right some 
hey, you know, <clears throat> communicating with your partners, right? Um, but I, I, to, to be honest, because I've been on both sides of this train track, I mean, a lot of people don't read messages, man. I mean, you know, like you get some people on the one side of the fence that are like, I, don't call me unless I have, unless I call you. And they get like, you know, send everybody to voicemail. And you get other people who are like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to the emails that you send out, right? But I'm looking for this, this, and this. Like, oh, yeah. Well, we launched that like six months ago. It's available now here. Just go here and it'll be right there, kind of thing. So I think communication is a two way street. Um, I know everybody has an opinion on it, especially in the keyboard, uh, the keyboard muscle areas, right? The forums and such. But um, I think the more communication, the better. I'm not saying call me every day. Uh, I'm also not saying call me once a year, but there's got to be a balance, I think, um, <clears throat> where you just build, you know, build a relationship. And quite frankly, you probably have heard it a thousand times. Uh, I'll add it a thousand and one. Um, every vendor has MDF funds allocated as part of their marketing spend every year. And I think every year, all of them say maybe half gets unused. So the reason it gets unused is there's no, like the relationship between the partner and the vendor isn't there. And so like that dialogue, that offer never gets put on the table because there's no communication, right? So it's just amazing how much money is literally at your fingertips if you're willing to do a little bit of legwork. But you, again, if there's no dialogue, you're just never going to get it. So but good point, Darren. Uh, and you know, I, will, I will point out, <clears throat> it was very obvious at the Build It conference where people used to be at certain companies or now with certain other companies and they kind of like get together and like, Hey, we're going to do it like a alumni photo. <laughs> and we're like, Oh, okay. Uh, so it is a very small kind of small sandbox. Right. And um, people tend to go from the left to the right kind of constantly for whatever it's worth. But <clears throat> one thing that has come out um, let's go to Microsoft land. Cause I think this is pretty important. It's on discord. It's on Reddit. It's on, um, it's also on the uh, MSP Geek and you know Slack channels. So um, Microsoft announced. We we all heard that they announced this price increase, right? <laughs> like twenty percent or so. Uh, that's coming in twenty twenty two. But some fine print <clears throat> actually came out of that story that I don't think everybody really understood as part of the announcement because it wasn't super clear until you kind of dug into it a little bit further. I'm going to share my screen here because give some credit to, um, you know, to uh, the man himself because I'm their line TE geek, but you know, he's, he's around, he runs, you know, all of the, um, you know, the capture the flag type events, stuff like this. So here's some things that you got to know, right? Microsoft's no allow, no longer allowing you to downgrade licenses within the account means if you, buy five licenses for a year and somebody leaves that organization, you want to take one off to make it four instead of five, <clears throat> halfway through a one year cycle, you're stuck paying that license all the way through. Which, I mean, not a lot of people, like you're not making a ton of money off of 365. Nobody's getting rich off of it. But I mean, that can quickly add up, especially if an organization is flexing up or during the pandemic, we saw flexing down. Um, so that's a problem. And then um, <clears throat> obviously we know they're increasing their pricing by 20%. Um, on top of the price increase coming in March. So, so I guess they're going to let you choose, right? Annual with no downgrade option. That's the 20% we heard about. Or if you try to go month to month, it's not just going to be 20%. It's going to be 40%. 20%, which is the base increase. 20%, which is the month to month premium instead of the annual premium, which is what we're all pretty much used to right now, the, probably the month to month where you can add up or down depending on, on what your customer's request is. <clears throat> so pro rating contract. So you cancel halfway through the month is also going away. Um, if you're canceling the license after 72 hours. So it's kind of like an airplane ticket, right? Or a hotel room, you book, a, you you know, mostly airplane. And now Darren, you'll probably, uh, although Darren's like uber platinum with whatever airline he's with, <clears throat> you book an airplane ticket, you got 24 hours to change your mind or else you don't get a refund, right? So now they're saying Microsoft, hey, if you add a license and 
you did it by mistake or you changed your mind. If you don't remove that license within 72 hours, not business hours, 72 hours. Uh, so it could be nights, weekends, vacations, holidays. Then you're stuck. You're paying. So that kind of stinks. And yeah, I'd like to know what everybody's opinion is of this. I, I, didn't, I didn't see any of this fine print. Uh, obviously, it takes us to a link, so we don't have to just trust Reddit, although I'm sure he's right. But um, this is pretty, <clears throat> pretty unfriendly news, um, I think, to the MSP channel. Anybody have thoughts on this? Darren, I'm going to pick on you, buddy. I expect nothing less from Microsoft. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, they, <laughs> this is, this is, uh, you know, they can do what they want, right? I mean, what, what is the, <laughs> <clears throat> well, but uh, there, remember, what was it a year ago or maybe a year and a half ago, they were going to start charging all the partners for their NFR licenses, right. As part of like action pack or silver gold, whatever status you are. And then all of a sudden there was like this huge cry of, you know, complaints. And then they backtracked on that. Um, and they really haven't tried, at least not recently, tried to go back and go down that road. So, you know, the question is, do, can we make enough noise to potentially prevent this from going into place? Because it really is anti-partner friendly. <laughs> I mean, you know, they say they want... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they like a lot of other companies. I mean, they're 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 not they don't necessarily have to be that partner friendly because <clears> yeah, Walter the, Walter says they have the market right. Right. I mean, it was like I like the option with hosted exchange, uh, which we're you know rapidly moving the rest of our people that aren't already off of it off of. <laughs> but I like that I could go to different companies to buy it from, and although know, it was all the same underlying technology, it was, I, I could get a better experience and maybe better pricing from one versus another. I mean, that was always how it was. And, uh, you know, they, they've eliminated it. And now here we go. I mean, this will be the first of, this will happen every year or two. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt because what do you tell somebody? Oh yeah, we're going to migrate you from 365 to what? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> bottom line is this is coming. Unless enough noise is made and Microsoft feels, you know, a little bit of heat. You, I mean, I assume everyone's going to have to go back and adjust things in their MSA unless you're just going to eat the difference, right? Because like a lot of people bill their managed services at the user level or the employee level. And then they, a lot of people just tuck that 365 into there. And... If you can't go down, that's a problem. Or if you're gonna pay a twenty, a forty percent increase, that's also a problem. So something, I think something has to give. Saw Pax Eights, you know, mentioned a couple times online that they're gonna try and advocate for their for the partner community, right? Because they're very tied in with Microsoft. But yeah, totally, totally, totally frustrating. And you know, I can imagine where people are gonna get a little bit, a little bit salty. A little bit salty. So that being said, since we're on the Microsoft uh, tip, uh, we mentioned it on Tuesday just a little bit. So it looks like Windows 11 is going general availability <coughs> in October. Uh, let me just double check that to make sure I didn't read that wrong. October 5th. October 5th is coming out of beta and it's going to be you know, just generally available. Has anyone actually played with Windows 11 at all? I, I don't have the time to even think about that. I mean, it's like the last thing I, <laughs> I get it again, another way to force people to upgrade or, you know, give them an option. But it's, uh, it's like, to me, it seems so low on the priority list, given everything else, which uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So... And then like trying to overlap that with Windows 10 end of life, that date is, uh, let's see. Uh, 
October 14th, 2025. So three-ish years, All right? Four years. So, I mean, you don't have to go do something tomorrow, but it's good to know what's happening. And hey, if, if Windows 11 is just a new skin to Windows 10, then you would think you're not going to have a lot of compatibility issues and you could just jump, you know, proactively get ahead of it. But that's just me being optimistic. I'm sure there's a bunch of changes. And, you know, is your all your customers line of business apps going to actually work? Um, that's that's definitely it. Edward says, I have absolutely no motivation to try Windows 11. OK, eventually you're going to have to do something right. I mean, just four years down the line, but totally get it. <clears throat> and then Walter says, wasn't that supposed to be never Windows 10 was going to be the ever evolving desktop? I guess they realized how much money they're losing. Oh, well, I mean, that's true, Walter. They, they were going to take like an Apple type of approach, right? Like OS X, pick your friendly name at the end, right? Snow Leopard or Candy Cane. I'm just making stuff up now, but popcorn. I mean, like Windows kind of said they were going to do the same thing, but I guess to change your mind. So um, they did say that Windows 11 is going to be more cloud embedded moving forward, meaning like, their apps weren't super friendly before, like OneDrive and Teams and all this other stuff. And it's just going to be like kind of built into the wrapper. He said more like Mac. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, they're clearly they're not building something new. They're taking a couple points from other guys. Right. So, you know, bottom line is Windows 10. Uh, you know, you got you got another four years approximately. I know that's going to go in the back burner as a result because, hey, you got bigger problems now. But um just keep your keep your eyes out for that because all things must come to an end at some point. <clears throat> the other thing that's uh, worth mentioning is um, you know back to uh, back to the security conversation, right? So uh, Microsoft had came out um, and made a general, uh, or at least in beta, I believe, over uh, you know Microsoft Inspire happened what two months ago, something like that, and uh, they released Lighthouse, right, which is kind of the beginning part of them trying to put out an RMM type solution, uh, you know, on the, on the Intune technology and the off and the M365 type stuff. Um, so a lot of people, I, I know me, I, you know, Darren and I had actually talked about this offline one day, but like, do you see people just running completely on the Microsoft management stack and not doing an RMM and, you know, a third party solution? Um, it's very inter it's a very interesting you know thought and it seems like all of the incumbent rmm vendors and we know them all well uh are building hooks i know solar winds was announced to be the first one which now is called enable but um they're now building hooks into intune and they're building hooks into lighthouse and they're building hooks into m365 so that they can try and bring some of that downstream into you know the interface and the tool that you know and love so i don't know um, something to be something to consider because I'm sure in Windows 11 they really bake that agent in rather than having to deploy another endpoint software like we're already doing. Um, uh, Walter says bring back Windows 7. I hear you, Walter. I do. I do. It, it did run. It did run for a long time and it ran well, right? <clears throat> but I, at some point, I think uh, Microsoft admitted that some of their source code got gobbled up in the solar winds incident uh, earlier this year in January timeframe, something like that. So I would hope that uh, that wasn't the newer stuff, but like if they got some XP source code or some windows seven, you know what? They should have just gave them the windows millennium edition source code. Should have never rolled that. And you know what? They should have just gave them Vista too. Now yeah, nobody wants that stuff. Right. But, uh, but if they actually got some of the windows seven source code, um, that's bad news from a security standpoint, right? So, um, obviously they, you know, Microsoft isn't perfect, right? I don't know if you heard earlier this week, <clears throat> Microsoft's, what are Microsoft's databasing products? Here it is. I'm going to share my screen actually, um, had exposed a lot of data. Here you go. So here you go. Microsoft a data breach, 38 million records, including social security numbers, vaccination data, 
Um, <clears throat> not good, obviously. So even Microsoft has their problems. They're not immune to all the crap that's happening now in cybersecurity land. So, um, so if you're using Microsoft Power Apps, um, guess what? Your data may have been exposed. Um, so you might want to double check that notification and understand what's involved, but um, or read this article. I'll put it in the chat for anyone that's live. But yeah, they're not immune either, right? And you know, just because big bad Microsoft is out there doesn't mean that, and raising their prices, by the way, doesn't mean that their security is <clears throat> invulnerable like everybody else, right? So there it is. Um, for anyone that didn't know about that. So um, moving along, <clears throat> one of the things that um, is definitely coming up was, and, and Ken Patterson mentioned it earlier in the week on the Tuesday session was, um, guess what? Uh, another Microsoft Exchange issue. And um, here, here, by the way, remember the thought I just gave you two seconds ago? Yeah, that mic the Microsoft hack from SolarWinds. Yeah, they're already they're already saying that in this article, right? That um, you know the some of the stuff that may have been pulled off the Microsoft servers as part of that SolarWinds you know hack may have exposed some of the stuff that's happening now with these the, you know new Exchange server vulnerabilities stuff like that. So, um, although it's very interesting if they say, oh, <laughs> Microsoft three six five wasn't swept in the breach because it runs in the cloud, which offers more protection. Okay. I, I got the marketing message, I do, but you got to start to think that these on-prem exchange server users are getting to the point where they're like, you got to get, shut this thing down, right? I mean, it's getting very, I'm sure very frustrating um, to everyone. Darren, are, are you okay, right? Because you're not on 365 yet. Did you get any notifications from your provider that all this stuff was plugged well i mean we're 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 about half and half now i mean we're, we're using rackspace and uh we're <clears> trusting <throat> them to trusting them to take care of it um so um which i'm hoping they have um but we're we're doing a couple migrations a week now just uh just out <clears> of necessity uh as much as i would rather not do them we you know we have to <laughs> no i totally totally understand i mean you know, a lot of the guys that were doing hosted exchange before 365 was 365, right? They were, you know, they're still running on the same software, right? That, you know, the on-prem exchange servers are running on, right? So. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, they, they, we, we asked them when the earlier one, but when, when the one earlier this year uh, came to light, we did talk to them and they said that they're, you know, absolutely on top of all that stuff. And that's, they can trust us to do that. So we are, we are trusting them to do that it's totally beyond our control anyway. So um, <laughs> there's nothing, no ability to, to, to do anything there. So. Yeah, totally, totally understand what you're saying. Uh, you know, gotta, gotta rely on the vendors, right? Can't do it all by yourself. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm a big fan of the Microsoft. I, I'm, I'm on all this Microsoft news, I guess the internet has realized that I was pulling up Microsoft information and, Voila, all that comes up. So um, so it looks like Microsoft is going to be updating their Surface line. And I'm a Surface fan, by the way. I've been using almost everybody here in my company uses Surface, Surface computers. Um, but it looks like on October or September 22nd, which is 20 days from now, Microsoft is going to be releasing the new Surface Duo 2, uh, if anybody knows what the Duo is, it's Microsoft's newest attempt at a, a foldable dual screen smartphone. So that looks like they're releasing the next generation of that. And it looks like the Surface Book 4 will, uh, will be released. And it looks like the Surface Laptop Pro is going to be released. So the laptop chassis, the Microsoft Book, Surface Book, where you can detach the screen from the, <clears throat> you know, the keyboard and mouse docking. Uh, and then it looks like the Microsoft Duo phone, will be, you know, the next gen of that will be being released 
later on this month. So that's cool. Uh, like I said, I'm a Microsoft Surface fan. <clears throat> I know like every year they come out with a new one. Doesn't mean I'm going to go buy a new one. But um, they work great. Especially when you, you know, of course, they've come out with their headphones and their, you know, their mouse and their pen. And it's basically Apple by Microsoft Edition, which pretty straightforward. So <clears throat> if you're a Microsoft Surface fan, there you go. Um, I don't know if everybody knew, but um, I know that a hurricane came through New Orleans area and like their power and sewer and water are all shut down. Um, so obviously keeping those people in mind. But coming back from the Build It conference uh, last last evening, yesterday evening, we were getting crazy weather in the Northeast, right? Like tornado warnings and flooding and what have you. And I got to tell you, it reminded me of the Super Bowl in New Jersey. Um, when they thought it was a great idea because they put a new new stadium in for the Giants and the Jets. They were going to run a Super Bowl there. Of course, cold weather. Uh, like an hour after the game started, like a blizzard hit and nobody could fly out of New York for like three or four days, uh, New York, New Jersey. So last night, tons of flooding. They shut down, like no flights got out, trains stopped. <clears throat> Most of New York City's power apparently went out for a while. I don't know if that was restored this morning, but like the subway platforms are underwater, stuff like that. And, um, you know, uh, George, my guy, my, 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 I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but my yeah. guy said on the road this morning, the, you know, two of them going up through Westchester into Connecticut, it was, they've never seen anything like the amount of cars, uh, countless cars just abandoned and all over the road. And I have several clients and friends that have their, you know, flooding, <laughs> uh, you know, basements totally flooded or, you know, businesses in some cases. So it, it, was, it was a total disaster. The, the, fir the first floor of Newark's airport had water, like three or four inches of water, um, which is crazy. And like a lot of flooding, a lot of rivers, you know, kind of bursting through the, the banks. Um, but that comes back to <clears throat> what are you going to do when your local internet provider's node is underwater? Um, what are you going to do when... You know, you don't have power. And what are you going to do when these kind of incidents come up? You know, I hate to go back to an old, older topic, which is like, hey, business continuity, what's your backup plan? But um, it's definitely real now. I mean, it's, you don't have to just be, you know, in a, yeah, data. Good solution. Definitely works. I mean, what do you do in those scenarios, right? Sell backup and multiple internet providers. And, you know, do you have a generator at your joint? I mean, these are all the questions that come up, but there's going to be a lot of people without internet and power for a while, <clears throat> I think. Tons of damage. So um, not like what I'm saying that we're anywhere near what New Orleans just went through, but I mean, weather is, you know, just like Microsoft, apparently. You can't control it. So um, got to have a plan. Got to have a plan. And tons of people stranded from the conference, apparently, uh, who literally couldn't get on Amtrak's or their flights got moved or delayed multiple times, canceled. Uh, I actually have a team member on my side that was at the conference with us. She's been at the airport since 6 p.m. in Newark <clears throat> and has and literally plane kept on getting canceled, kept on getting pushed back, that kind of stuff. So um, not great. I think the Northeast is going to be pretty banged up for a few weeks while they you know kind of put stuff back together. So definitely have your your plan. I know your customers are always like, hey, what you know, what's What's that once in a blue moon, 100 year storm, right? Hurricane Sandy when it rolled through. But <clears throat> it's for real. And uh, you got to have a plan. So, worthwhile to have a conversation with your customers about what the backup strategy is, especially since now in today's world, a lot of people are not in the same part of the world or the country, right? You could have somebody in different states and kind of business still can continue uh, and you can still service your customers as best you can while. You know, the people in a certain, you know, city or, you know, like Northeast in this case could be completely offline because no power, no internet. So something to consider, all right, as, as people are bringing people on board, kind of spreading your team out over different time zones, <clears throat> which obviously helps from a coverage standpoint, but also can help you from a, a business continuity standpoint. So I forgot to do my, um, my beginning of a show kind of checklist. So I'm going to take the time to do that now because, you know, Darren's just can't wait for us to get out to the West Coast. Um, so hold on one second. Switching back to msbinitiative.com under Channel Strong. 
So if you happen to be in California or uh, Salt Lake, Vegas, uh, Denver, or Phoenix, and that Phoenix will be going to the Taylor Business Group, um, <clears throat> Big Bake. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, I tried mentioning it on Tuesday, but this is a peer group, Taylor Business Group. It's open to the community. It's not just for peer group members, right? And this is their conference, 23rd to the 25th in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, on, on like a casino resort type setup. So uh, if anyone's interested in going to the desert for a few days and learning some stuff, let us know, you know, and we'll see if we can get you hooked up. And I think Darren actually said he might be interested in going. I'm interested. Yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see if we can get you hooked up. Um, so this could be cool, right? We're going through San Diego all the way up, you know, every stop all the way up to kind of like just north of San Francisco. And then we kind of go over. We got Salt Lake, Vegas, going to be in the big, big for, you know, day and a half, two days. And our last day will be in Denver. Uh, and I, I believe we'll have, you got a guess. And I don't know what the number is, a good, healthy PAX 8 contingent since a lot of people are out there in Colorado, PAX 8 HQ, and those guys haven't been, been together for a while. So can only imagine that that probably is what happened there, but uh, definitely go to MSPinitiative.com under channel strong. If you have any of these dates that you think you're interested in joining us, scroll down, put in a request. <clears throat> we'll get you an invite out there. Uh, also under sessions, right? This session, every other session we've had is available online. So um, you can get that there uh, for the Gary V uh, session. Uh, again, that's I shared it to all the groups, including our MSP initiative Facebook group. You should be able to watch that there. Uh, great session. Definitely watch it. And the last thing I'm going to mention is a giveaway uh, where basically you just got to throw your name in the hat and win one of 10 prizes from our participating vendors that just want to hook up the community with some, some cool, some cool gear. So don't forget to do that. Uh, we'd love to see you out on the road. If you happen to be anywhere <laughs> in the Southwest, uh, always good conversation happens. We're always talking about, you know, shop and what people are doing and what's working, what's not. So That'll be, that'll be interesting. Um, the last thing I figure I, you know, kind of bring up is um, what, you know, and, and Darren, you're out on the West Coast, so maybe I'll pick your brain, but it sounds like, um, like, for example, Seattle has reinstituted mass policy, uh, data cons around the corner. The only, the only reason nothing has changed in a lot of California is because of the recall that is in process and uh newsom is trying to be uh not you know keep the status quo while that's happening and then if he <clears throat> didn't california what weren't they wasn't the state legislature voting on a bill in california on monday that was to kind of put in mandatory pass uh, vaccine passports i i don't i honestly don't i don't follow that uh i'm still uh still in <laughs> george so you know yeah I'm out here, but uh, I can't, uh, I can't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have to go back. I believe there is, they were voting on a bill on Monday this past Monday. I never went back to look at what the results were, but <clears throat> the idea is that the fall Harry member, Harry from SMB tech fest, or not SMB tech fest. Um, uh, the, the, you see the Microsoft SMB network kind of guy, you know, he posted online. Um, Hey, the fall schedule is in jeopardy. Um, so obviously if you're thinking about the two major ones, well, there's three major conferences coming up. Uh, you have Kaseya's conference in Vegas, uh, connect it global. I think they call it. You have Datto's conference in Seattle and you got it nation in, um, in Orlando. So, um, those are the three big ones. There's other little ones in between, right? Like ASCII's and channel pros and Robin Robbins and all that stuff. And even channel strong. So what do you think these things go off? Are you guys still interested in going to these larger events? You know, is that still in the, is that still in the mix? I, I think they're going to go off. Uh, I, I mean, you might have different levels of attendance as I was telling yesterday, you know, I was supposed to be at Cedia, which is a AV show. We also do a lot of AV. So, and uh, you know, it looks like two thirds of the, 
the vendors pulled out of that one, but they still <coughs> went on. And uh, I mean, it didn't seem like that one would be worth attending, but uh, these other, I think the other stuff will, I'm hopeful that it will be okay. We'll see. Uh, Walter says, as long as I don't have to be on a plane, I'm good to go. Well, Walter, where, where you live, man. I mean, if you're, let's say you're in uh, Chicago, so you're in the middle. Could, would you drive to Seattle from Chicago or Orlando from Chicago? No, there it is. So that's pretty long haul, man. Orlando. Okay. Warm weather only. Okay. All right. So you're saying you're willing to make the drive from Chicago, but you're only going to go to a warmer climate. That's not a bad thought. I'm with you there. Um, you know, when I do my Eagles away games, you know, don't, don't, <clears throat> don't hold it against me. You know, Philadelphia Eagles fan here in Philly. You know, when I do our away games, you know, there's always that voice in the group that's like, hey, man, it's going to be cold. We should always go somewhere warm, uh, especially on the tail end of the year. So totally, totally understand the sentiment. Uh, and Orlando is definitely nicer uh, in October than or November than probably Seattle. But, hey, you know, <clears throat> warm weather absolutely helps. Hopefully warm and dry weather. Um, Everybody's got a different comfort level, right? I mean, there's people all over the map with this stuff. So. Um, you know, there's, uh, I think there's plenty of people that don't have a problem getting on a, on a plane or, or being in, you know, a, a group of people. So I think there's enough that will make these things still, still go on and still be worthwhile. Yeah, no, totally understand. Well, I'm looking forward to these events going off. I hope that they do. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like having just come from the builder conference, I mean, there's a lot of conversation about this topic and obviously the people that love going to conferences are going to get there one way or another, but I, you yeah, know, I was just had a conversation just earlier and you have the same level of interaction. Uh, if you have to wear a mask indoors, if, if that is the requirement, um, you know, you, or, you know, you're going to go into a session or a general session or <clears throat> the conference party, whatever, still don't know how you, how you drink or eat with the mask on, but your favorite buddy over there, Darren Newsom, says you should you should drink through the mask. I, I don't know. I don't know how that works, but um, <clears throat> might change might change the feel, right? That's all. I guess we'll find out pretty soon here if something does change because kind of running out of time if they're going to make a flip, right? I mean, people have booked rooms and flights and all sorts of other good stuff. So got to imagine that's got to come down the line. But word on the street is, or at least according to, uh, a late night MSP geek connect live session. Uh, there is no restriction for IT nation wide open, no limit, no head count limit. Uh, like they did in, you know, earlier at their IT nation secure in Orlando. So that's the current news from that. Uh, haven't heard any difference on Kaseya, but not sure how many people are going to go to that one. I think the big one is Datto. So we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see if they're still on. I'm sure they're going to find out going to have to find out soon. So that being said, um, looking forward to those events happening. I want to see people in person because uh, we definitely need a lot more of that, in my opinion. Uh, again, if you can make it out to the West Coast, please visit us on the road uh, in parking lots uh, for uh, Channel Strong Tour. Uh, lots of good people there. Always a good time. That's only a couple hours at the end of the day, so you don't really have to take a day off of work. Uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, and uh, again, don't, don't forget to throw your name in the hat for some of these prizes. We're going to end the show a little bit early today. We'll be back Tuesday and, and uh, Thursday, 1 o'clock Eastern time next week uh, with some more uh, guests uh, and some more commentary. And uh, don't forget to watch that Gary V video. I think you'll, you'll definitely get something out of it. I know I did. So thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll get you guys next time.